Destination mark. Let's talk about this. Did you think it was on before? Cause it ain't, it wasn't even on. It's on her now. Did you think it was cray cray before? Well, it's cray crayer now. <laughs> So Crash and Sand Trilogy has been out for almost a year now. Despite what I've covered in part one about the fans' backlash on certain things, the remastered trilogy ultimately did its job. It resurrected Crash and shot him right back into the spotlight, making him relevant in the gaming industry once more after six years of inactivity. But the big question on everyone's mind now is, where do we go from here? Activision did promise more things could come out of the Crash franchise if Insane did well, and now that it has, what can we expect? Back when we were all still speculating on how Crash could make his return, lots of ideas were thrown around. A reboot, an HD remaster, a sort of sequel or continuation from the Titans Men Over Mutant saga, and yes, lots of people did want Crash and Skylanders. Two of these four things have actually yeah. come to fruition, yeah, so let's take a closer look at these other choices and see what would be the best route for the Crash franchise to take. For starters, let's get the possibility of a direct sequel to Mind Over Mutant out of the way. To me, this is the least likely to happen. It can look super detailed and pretty on the PS4, sure, but to revert back to this art style, humor, and gameplay would be a step back for the series. Don't get me wrong, I've defended these two games multiple times in the past. I really enjoy them. But if we were to go the sequel route, it would feel very disconnected from the style we've been subjected to as of recent, which is a more nostalgia-based style, and saying it is a direct throwback to the Night Dog trilogy. Now, I'm not saying we have to stay in this Night Dog-inspired visual style, but we may need something a little more transitional first before throwing an entirely new character design such as this at us again. Not only that, but the fans... Yeah, remember how I explained their backlash towards Insane Trilogy, a remaster of the games they loved? This would cause another friggin' uproar! And before you say screw those so-called fans, we gotta keep in mind that they unfortunately do make up the majority here. Many, many a fan would call Titans and Mind Over Mutant shitty games that don't feel like Crash. But we who gave those games a more fair chance know that's not the case. Those games do keep a lot of what made Crash awesome alive. It's just that when it comes to gameplay, the focus shifted from strategic platforming and breaking crates to get Wumpa Fruit, which you still do by the way, to fighting against large enemy ambushes and taking control of the titular titans. Basically, those games are good for what they are, but if the Titans Mutant Saga were to have been a trilogy, they should have done it back in 09. It would feel very awkward to have a direct follow-up after all these years, and after Ensign at that. Okay, let's get to the main attraction here. CTR Remastered. Crash Team Racing was my first racing game ever, and I love it to death. So when fans went crazy over a remaster of the Naughty Dog Crash platforming games getting announced, everyone was also wondering, what about Naughty Dog's Crash Racing game? Watch any insane trailer online. In the comments, I guarantee you will find comments asking, no, downright demanding Vicarious Visions remaster CTR. My take on the matter? Eh. Yeah, I know I just said I love this game, and I greatly appreciate Ensign and what it's done to effectively bring Crash back, but you gotta consider the context in which these projects get brought up. Ensign was made so people could be reminded of who Crash was, and also to celebrate the 20th anniversary. And while there is great potential for a CTR remaster, I don't think it's needed. At least not right now. If it happened a few years down the line, would I lose my shit? Of course. Would I pre-order and full-on support it? Most definitely. Like I said, there is great potential here. Just imagine CTR with Ensign's art style, the graphical upgrade. Imagine how much faster and more frantic they can make the gameplay. Imagine online multiplayer. That's the main thing I keep hearing that people want, and that would be awesome. The only real cartoony kart racer we have right now is Mario Kart. So kind of like back then, imagine if CTR Remastered would actually compete with Mario Kart 8. It'd be nuts. Also, Mario Kart 8 took the anti-gravity mechanic from Crash Central Kart. Yes, I said it. which, by the way, was made by Vicarious Visions. You see how deep the rabbit hole goes? But I digress. CTR could highly benefit from a remaster, but I've seen tons of comments not only asking for a CTR remaster, but a Crash Bash remaster as well, and a Wrath of Cortex remaster, and a Twin Sanity remaster. Let's just remaster them all, why don't we? Can't you see the problem with this? Everyone's gonna want different remasters of past Crash games. Most likely not even for the gameplay, probably just to see how those games would look with today's graphics. Again, Insane had context for why it was made. The only other game out of the Crash series I could ever see getting remastered Mastered is CTR, because it falls under a different genre and isn't another platformer. But again, it's not needed at this current moment because there would be too many remasters. We need VV to take a break from revisiting Crash's past and focus on steering them on course towards a great future. But, 
Before coming to our biggest point, let's address the elephant in the room, Crash Twin Sanity. Just after Insane's launch, Twin Sanity artist Keith Webb from Traveler's Tales sent an open letter to Vicarious Visions, congratulating them on the remastered trilogy's success. But then he proposed that the two companies eventually team up to remake Crash Twin Sanity with all the cut content put back in. And trust me, there's a lot of cut content. So much so, that I personally think a Twin Sanity remake shouldn't happen. Now hear me out, instead of remaking this game with all its cut stuff added back in, how cool would it be if they went back to what Twin Sanity was supposed to be? I'm talking about Crash Bandicoot Evolution. Let me retract the previous statement. I think a new original game following Mind Over Mutant could happen, and this could be it. Twin Sanity is a small, teeny tiny fragment of what Evolution was supposed to be. A grand sci-fi epic that featured Crash and Cortex exploring new worlds and helping out crazy new characters along the way. And before you exclaim how sci-fi wouldn't fit Crash, just look at how many space references and actual space events there were in the series up to Twin Sanity. Hell, even past Twin Sanity. Cortex escapes into outer space at the end of Mind Over Mutant. Spoilers? Uh, I don't know. There's your setup right there, gift wrapped for you. You can have the plot take place right after Mind Over Mutant, but mesh the art style to have it all. A bit of Vincent with the fur textures and such, a bit of twin sanity for nostalgia's sake and to acknowledge the concept's roots, and a bit of Mind Over Mutant as this would be its follow-up. I think this would be a great original game that isn't a remake or a remaster or technically connected to any one game in universe. It would just be very derivative in terms of art style and conceptual backstory. So yeah, that's my take on a twin sanity remake. I love this game, it's my favorite non-Naughty Dog title, but as glitchy and unfinished as it is, it's still playable and and it's fine as it is, if that makes sense. It can sure benefit from a graphical and content update, but like CTR, I don't think it's necessary. Evolution, on the other hand, was such a huge and ambitious concept that was scrapped due to feeling too similar to Ratchet and Clank. But with how much time has passed and now that Ratchet is a solidified franchise with a specific look and feel, you could definitely revisit this project and take it in a really great direction that won't necessarily invoke that Ratchet look and feel. But with all that out of the way, I leave you with this final consideration. One we were initially hoping for when the big news hit during E3 2016 that Crash was returning. We all wanted to see a reboot. One almost happened with Crash Landed back in 2010, but it was one of several cancelled projects after Mind Over Mutant and the mobile games were released. Then there were the PlayStation All-Stars rumors and Crash ultimately didn't make an appearance. There was a leaked picture of a new Crash design, being a project from VV that ended up going nowhere. Twice for Bob had a Crash concept, nothing came from it besides this artwork. Mark Cerny wanted to direct a Crash project, the second attempt after what became Wrath of Cortex, and that ultimately ended up becoming Knack. So many people wanted to keep Crash going, but for whatever fucked up, dumbass reasons, Activision canned a good portion of these, or other reasons prevented these projects from coming to fruition, and we fans were all just yearning for something new for Crash. And that's exactly it. Fans were yearning for something new. And when Ensign came out, there were a good amount of people who discarded it initially, because it wasn't what they wanted. Ensign is merely a remaster. Lots of people want to see something original for Crash again. And while all these other solutions are brought up will suffice, for me anyway, I do want to see something original too. A reboot could open up so many possibilities. It's the one option that'll allow the most creative freedom. Andy Gavin was once quoted as saying, Crash needs a total reboot. There's an opportunity to reset the history and go back to his creation story and the original conflict with Cortex. In that context, you can reprise classic Crash 1 and 2 settings and villains. It would make sense to use a more modern, free-roaming style. This makes a ton of sense, and this could be a great chance to give us a truly story-driven Crash game. Rewrite Crash's origins, bring back the Cortex commandos, really show the science-y mechanical goings-on that Cortex and Brio put into these machines. Mind Over Mutant did return to a lot of these concepts, but they weren't necessarily the focus. All you needed to know was evil mind-controlling devices evil. Crash Landed would have focused more on the mutation of animals and Crash having to save them from Cortex's grasp, but the game was cancelled. I always had this almost Lilo and Stitch-like idea for a Crash plot in my head. Cortex could showcase Crash to an evil council of scientists, boasting that he'll be the one to bring a revolution of diabolical animal mutations that would change the world, but as fate would have it, Crash can't be controlled, so he would escape and have to stop Cortex from carrying out his plans. There's some good stuff there. You don't have to make it super serious, cause honestly, how do you make this serious? But this could be the first mature Crash plot that dares to bring back a very Crash 1-esque dark tone and atmosphere. But of course, plot isn't everything. The huge thing to discuss here is the gameplay. Now in my honest opinion, going back to Andy's quote where he mentions a free roaming Crash experience, a Crash reboot shouldn't take all its inspiration from past games like Mind Over Mutant, Twin Sanity, or even the Naughty Dog games. In fact, the biggest game it should take inspiration from isn't even a Crash game, it's Super Mario Odyssey. This game does incredible things with its gameplay. You have these wide open, sandbox environments to run around in that rely heavily on exploration and discovery. Linearity is only utilized in two ways, the main story paths in each location, and the challenges you find behind hidden doors or pipes that resemble classic 3D Mario challenges akin to the Galaxy games. But for the most part, Odyssey is only as linear as the player makes it out to be. Not only that, but the references? 
Dear God! This game has to take the cake for the most references to past Mario games, both popular and obscure, and they all work. Just because the homages are there doesn't mean Odyssey is recycling older content for the sake of familiarity or... <clears throat> Laziness. They're here to honor the plumber's past adventures while being utilized in a more modern, unique way. Likewise, a Crash reboot could throw Crash and Company into a super amazing, wide open world and drop all kinds of neat homages and nods to Insane Trilogy and other past titles. It could be fucking crazy! It could be the best of all worlds. Us super fans would get the best kick out of everything it has to offer. Other fans who are very particular would be satisfied with the references and homages to their favorite Crash games. And anyone out there who still hasn't tried out Crash and Cortex and Imaginators or played in could get a whole brand new crazy experience with Crash that they wouldn't get in any other previous installment. It would be a kick-ass introduction for newcomers to the series for sure. Also, while we're on the subject of gameplay and showing super science-y mechanical stuff, can we please get a game where you play as Coco and actually use her mechanical prowess? Only three games actively show her do this. Wrath of Cortex has her setting up this big-ass portal chamber. Natural Cart has her hacking Nash's brain and putting him to sleep. And Mind Over Mutant has her working on the Duminator Eye, attempting to convert it into... Twin Sanity would have given us this. We would control Coco and she'd have to hack into Cortex's castle from the first Crash game while wearing a super cool spy suit. And the lab assistants would have returned looking like something out of the Matrix. That sounds badass! Yes, please! But... I digress. It all depends on executing this next project right. Maybe these crazy ideas I have wouldn't be the best move. Maybe VV or whoever the hell else would want to try and tackle Crash has better ideas. While doing the reboot would allow for the most creative freedom, it would still bring along that sense of dread of nailing down Crash's feel and essence that VV most definitely felt while working on Insane. Plus, this would ultimately determine Crash's fate. I had the pleasure of attending the Crash reunion panel at E3 Coliseum. And there, Jason Rubin said something very interesting and bittersweet about the future of Crash. So I'll let this clip do the talking. There is a very good question whether or not Crash is a character that after the nostalgia of doing the games we've already made, do you take the character and do something new, do something more contemporary that speaks to this generation of gamer? And I don't know. I don't know if you go back and take a character from PlayStation and can make them relevant beyond the nostalgia. So that remains to be seen. He's speaking some red hot truth here. This is the first time we've experienced true nostalgia for Crash. It was his 20th anniversary celebration after all. But with all of the developers that have played hot potato with the series, and with all the character redesigns and absurd crazy plots and adventures, and with this incredibly picky fan base, I can do nothing more but pose this very important question. How much farther can the Crash Bandicoot franchise really go? I'm so glad, and surprised, that Crash even made it to his 20th. And it really shows how the pure strength and desire of the fanbase can resurrect a seemingly dead character. For better or for worse. But if I'm being completely honest with myself, as a longtime fan of this series since the very beginning, I don't see it going too much further. In my opinion, the series should eventually retire, or risk hitting burnout again and ending for good on a sour note. What if we got a really ambitious game that failed to take off critically and commercially, and Crash effectively died because of it? While the series is here in the industry again, we need to make the most of it. With whoever develops future titles making smart decisions, and with us supporting them, not bashing them. Trust me, there's more that can be done with the series. But at this point in time, with how much the gaming industry, the concept of 3D platformers, and even the Crash series itself has changed, whoever handles Crash at this point, whether it's still VV or someone else, needs to be extremely careful in how they go about forging the Bandicoot's future. This next project, whatever it may be, will most likely determine whether Crash Bandicoot was only ever just a token of nostalgia that can't move on and stand on some original legs again, be it due to uninspired ideas by the devs or the fans themselves not being able to move on, or a powerhouse that effectively came back from the dead, dropped some nostalgia on older fans while giving newcomers an insight as to who he was, and moved on to flourish and evolve with some crazy new ideas that honor the franchise's past while steering it onwards to a great future. So, what'll it be? Another remaster? A dead project resurrected and seen to its full potential? A kick-ass reboot that can be both refreshing and nostalgic? We'll have to wait and see. But with the astounding success of Insane Trilogy, I do sense some great things ahead for Crash. But, it's not just Crash I want to see grow and have a bright future. There's also a certain purple dragon we have to talk about. What are you laughing about, Spyhole the Dragon? <laughs>